Hey, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to Hidden Row. So last week we received the Sasori trailer, and we got some interesting hints as to what's to come for the future of Shinobi Striker. Today we received even more hints as to what's to come, and so in this video we will put together all the clues and try to guess what it all means. Before all that, though, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a like too if you're hyped for season eight of Shinobi to the board to Shinobi Striker. All right, let's get it. So bruh, let's get hyped because the Japanese Twitter account dropped the theme of Season Pass 8 as well as how many characters that will be coming for this year of DLC. And to be honest, I kind of expected this as much because it nicely ties everything together. Yes, we will be getting 5 characters for a Season Pass. And that's not all of it. The theme of this pass is Tag Team. So with that in mind, we can now speculate what characters will be coming and what will be the extra battle features that the Sasori trailer mentioned. Firstly, let's talk about the features since the subreddit has been going crazy over a 1v1 mode. From what I gather off rip, battle features is plural, meaning that there will be multiple features coming in the near future. Next, now that we have the theme, tag team, we can also speculate that these battle features will have something to do with that. My guess is that they will get into one of the following for sure a PvE raid boss, a 2v2 mode, or a battle royale. While any of these things will be cool, I have my reasons to believe that we'll be getting some sort of battle royale mode, so hear me out. Remember the 5 villages event that was talked about in the data mine files some years back? I'm thinking there will be a 5 teams of 4 or 20 player mode that will represent each of the 5 great nations and fit this new battle feature. Lately the devs have been using old assets found in the files and finally bringing them into the game. Examples like the San Shuriken now on PTS Gara, or Sasori, a whole ass DLC character have come so it only makes sense that they finally introduced whatever the 5 villages event was. With that being said, there is still hope that tag team could mean teaming up with your friends and doing a custom 4v4 match, like we always wanted. This would be the best case scenario and to be honest, I think that the devs will finally take community feedback more seriously. It's now highly possible that we will be getting custom matchmaking for season 8 and I can't help but be a little excited for the future of this game. That being said, for all those who wanted a 1v1 mode, don't get your hopes down. Even though the theme is tag team, with multiple battle features coming, I can see them taking that into consideration as it is a popular request. I will be honest, a 2v2 mode does seem a lot more likely and I think it will be even more fun than a 1v1 mode low key. Now, let's talk characters because as we can see there are 5 slots so I'll end off the video with my thoughts and predictions. Firstly, we already have 15 attack, range and defense type characters so I know for a fact that the first DLC will be a heal type. And speaking of heal type, I think this season pass will have two heal types to keep the characters at an even 16 apiece. So with that tag team theme in mind, who do I see coming for this pass of DLC? Firstly, I think Shino will be the first heal type character. Keeping with the theme of using assets already in the game, Shino just makes sense as he already has files like Sasori and his bugs are like a team with Shino. I think he fits the support role of healers well and can provide some interesting debuffs and ranged attacks which heal types desperately need. Next, I can see the rest of the season pass going in order of attack, range, defense and finally healer again so it comes as no surprise that I believe Kiba will be the first attack type DLC. For the same exact reasons that I think Shino will be coming, he already has unused assets in the files and he is a tag team with Akamaru. Plus, it will be good for attack types to get another mid character for a DLC. They're getting a new sword anyway, so they'll be happy with dynamic marking P Jutsu or whatever. Next, for range type, as much as I would enjoy having a 1010 DLC here, she doesn't really fit the tag team theme as much as this character does, so unfortunately, she'll stay screwing us over with the scrolls in the shop. Instead, Momoshiki makes the most sense as the next range DLC for tag team. Otsutsuki travel in pair and Momoshiki did travel with Kinshiki and absorb him giving him his ultimate form. Plus he now resides in Boruto so he fits the theme perfectly. And yes, as a range type, he is a range character for sure. For defense type, I had to think hard on this one and to be honest I'm kinda stumped. But since we do have Hidan and Kakuzu's outfits coming and not their hairstyles, I'm thinking that they might come as a pair with Kakuzu being a defense type and Hidan being a heal type. 
or vice versa. My reason behind these two outside of the tag team theme is that Kakuzu is tanky and he is very versatile which fits defense types perfectly. However, he also was a supporter aiding Hidan and actually sewing his head back together on his body so heel type also makes sense. For Hidan, he is immortal as defense types seem to be and they also fight on the front lines. But then again he also fits the heel types as well because he does debuff the enemy with his ritual and then take damage with the enemy although he actually doesn't take damage because again he's immortal so I can see him being on the heel types too. So whether the frontline defense type or a status element heel type, Hidan definitely fits here and the theme. But give me your thoughts guys, how hype are you for season 8 tag team and what characters and battle features do you guys think are coming? Let me know down in the comment section below. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace. Gotcha, bitch.